What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Gun Grave. So guess what, Brandon he has this awesome motorcycle <laughs> with a sidecar that's full of weapons, including uh, his own coffin thingy. Yeah, I like this cutscene, it gets uh, to show off a lot more of the uh, cyberpunk uh, near future aesthetic. We also get chased by this random uh, flying Corvette thing with uh, missiles. But luckily we have missiles of our own. So badass. Yeah, this thing is in the anime too, and I was so happy when I first saw it. I was like, yeah, the freaking motorcycle's in here too. Even if it only made a small appearance in both the game and the show. I wish I could have one of these in real life, I tell you what. Alright, so it's time for the obligatory sewer level. Actually, I like this level quite a bit, even though I say that. Um, <clears throat> despite the fact that you know, design-wise, aesthetically, it's really bland. But I like the encounters, and it gets better towards the end, especially the boss battle at the end, so it's not all bad. Uh, one thing I like, would like to point out, especially that's especially noticeable here, is that the uh, shooting sound effects seem to change depending on where you are, like depending on your atmosphere, if you're more outdoors, and you can have a softer sound effect. It seems like it changes several times throughout each level, but this is a sort of unique sound that they make down here, I guess, because they're supposed to be echoing louder. I don't know what the point of that is, but I don't really like how it sounds at this level. But whatever, minor details. Um, anyway, now if you know the anime, then you know that Bear Walken has his own private uh, militia, essentially, called uh, the Overkills, which are a bunch of uh, agents that only they answer only to him. Really, they are they're part of uh, Millennium, but they they strictly follow his orders. They're his personal hit squad, essentially. So. Are we to, I mean, obviously I'm not going to, I don't even have to, that's not even a spoiler. Obviously we're going to fight Bear Walken in this video. But are we meant to believe that these guys are just like random like SWAT team members or something like that? Or do we think that these are actually the overkills? Um, interesting theory for you guys. Um, but there's a lot of them. They're actually pretty... They're not that tough, um, despite the fact that they look pretty tough. There's those floating turret things, which look like they'd be a lot of trouble, but you can, if you um, go into burst mode while stationary, then they can usually be taken out pretty quickly. It's getting a lock on them is a real pain. But there are some, there are going to be some actually really challenging enemies in the encounters with these guys. Um, that we're going to be fighting later on. Like these guys with flamethrowers and shit, and it's just going to be really crazy. I'm probably going to not be using, um, oh, there's one of the big guys right there. I'm, I'm thinking about if I'm, yeah, see, he's got a flamethrower. He's a big fight. Again, with the draw distance and not being able to see into the darkness of the room here. There's more rocket launcher guys. That's a pretty dangerous place to have him, too, because then you get knocked off the side of the platform there. I'm not sure what happens if you fall off this railing here, if, if you die instantly, or if you have to climb back up, or what happens. These guys are really annoying how they just come right out of that door like that, even if you're trying to go through it. Reminds me a lot of the floating turret things in, in uh, Binary Domain, actually. I need to finish that game. <laughs> the game's got an ass kicking two years in, in the making now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Maybe one day, viewers, maybe one day. If anybody actually wants to see me complete that game, I will do it. I just need to have a lot more patience. I was being so impatient with that game, not wanting to do, complete my third test run just because. I wasn't enjoying it at all, but I realized I should have finished it because there's a lot to say about that game and um, not a lot of people have said it. So it actually would be kind of uh, good for me to say something about it. Alright, there's some guys with, uh, with riot shields who actually are kind of tricky because they seem to resist a lot of damage from a head on fire as they would. That's the purpose of their... Thing. Okay, finally we're going to show off the last demolition shot here. The Raging Inferno! There we go. So it's like the uh, it's like the bullet dance, except we uh, spin around twice and we jump into the air, and it does a crap ton more damage. 
Um, there's another opportunity to use it right here if I want to. There we go, yeah! So overpowered. Um, there are instances where I will go back to using the Hellhound Roar um, for certain, probably in, in the last level, but for now I'm going to keep using this, and I definitely want to keep at least one um, demolition shot for the... Um, oh, these guys with the girders here are really annoying. Just like the guys with the girders in the second level, they can deal a crap ton of damage to you if you're, if you're standing still, and they get multiple hits on you and you start flinching, they will just beat you up. Anyway, um, I definitely want, like I said, want to save one of my demolition shots for the boss battle so I can get a graveyard finish on uh, Bear Walking. It's almost like I've played this game before. <laughs> okay, so now is a uh, the obligatory elevator ride, but instead of just sitting here waiting patiently. Oh yeah, I've, I've not demonstrated that. That you can with the select button, you can do a random pose, and I guess doing that at certain times um, can affect your style points. Like I've never really bothered to do that, so I don't really know how your style points are affected. But if you get a certain style rating, then you can get um, a greater score at the end of each level. So again, the fact that it's an arcade type game and you want to beat your own score, that kind of thing. If you're going for a better score, there's got to be some way. To, I'm sure someone has it figured out, like how to utilize the poses to get a better score. Um, but I've not really figured out how to do it. I might show off a few more by the end of the game, but they are they're they're pointless, but they are really cool. They're a lot. They're pretty much you know, grave signature poses anyway. So um, that's where a lot of these poses came from. Is um, you know that that move right there. Um, but like I said, this is a rail shooting sequence um, instead of a. Um, uh, just boring elevator ride. So we got enemies coming up along the side there. This reminds me of the elevator thing in Vanquish. Why am I relating this to all these other third-person shooters? Because I can. Actually, you know what? Um, yeah, these floating turret things actually look more like the floating turret things in Vanquish than the other ones in Binary Domain. So one is in Binary Domain just hold other enemies and then they drop them and they move on. But anyway, um... Yeah, not really a whole lot going on right here. When you get the enemies on the floating turret things that are behind you or on the side of you, and you have the enemies on the other elevator, that can be kind of tricky because the other guys on the other elevator have those machine guns. Um, but if we, we, I'm just standing still here using burst mode and just sweeping all my bullets across from one side of the screen to the other, and it seems to be working pretty well so far. Um, oh, I, I just realized there's a move right there I didn't realize I could even do. <laughs> That's pretty cool. If I'm walking backwards, I can tap A real quick and kind of do a back side step, or not, not, uh, not X, um, not, not A using a circle. But you circle while I'm uh, walking backwards, I can do like a little back step. I'd rather just do a, a shoot dodge backwards though, and that's probably what I'll continue to do. But I didn't realize that uh, if you try to sprint backwards, you just do like a little back step. That's pretty cool. Not a whole lot of room to dodge these rockets on this elevator here, but it's okay. Alright, I have two demolition shots and we're gonna come up to the boss fight against Bear Walk In. Huh, nice atmosphere here. A lot better than those crappy sewers. Nice dojo you got here. You were a badass from the moment we met you, but I didn't think we'd ever actually fight. Okay, time for a boss battle against Bear Walking. So he, in his first form here, is actually not that hard. If we keep shoot dodging and targeting his um, <clears throat> his crazy limb weapon things that he's deployed in his superior mode. We can kill his first form pretty fast. He does have a few nasty attacks there. He's pretty accurate with that machine gun. He tries to follow us even after we've dodged. And he also has a flamethrower up there, as you can see. Um, but he, he, he's, like I said, he's pretty accurate, but it doesn't take much to kill him in this form. Um, in the anime, he fights... Uh, this actually does happen where his whole dojo gets blown up like this. But that doesn't happen until well into their fight. And um, his first... Uh, he fights him just as a, his regular... with well, the sword and everything. Um, and he actually destroys 
uh, Graves' coffin, and he never uses his co his coffin is it's destroyed. He never gets it back for the rest of the series, and so he fights without it. Um, obviously, in this we can't let that happen, of course, as we need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish him off with my first demolition shot here. Save the second one for the graveyard finish. Um, as you can, I'm gonna switch over back over to Hellhound Roar for the beginning of the next level, for reasons. Um, as you can see there, there's another option at the bottom of the screen there to consume one of your demolition judges to replenish your health, or demolition shots rather, to fin uh, replenish your health. I like that dialogue there, but it's not as good as it is in the anime. The, this fight is a lot more meaningful in the anime, and I'll talk more about why when we actually beat him. Holy crap! This guy will make the charger from Left 4 Dead 2 look inadequate. Alright, so this is actually one of the harder bosses, probably the hardest, or actually, yeah, it's probably the second hardest boss in the game. Um, and uh, his nastiest attack right there is where he lunges forward with his fist, and then backs up really fast. He has three different attacks. He can throw a piece of debris at us, which explodes on impact, and he can also kick up the ground and send a shockwave at us, and then he can do his little charge attack there. The problem is, when you're the only way to be close enough to, oh, I guess he has that that attack too. When, the only way we are close enough to target him to deal any amount of damage without being in burst mode is when he's is when we're close enough to be hit by that that attack right there. So we gotta get him to we gotta constantly be close enough to him to get him to do his forward lunge attack without being able to be hit by it. It's really tricky to get in that little sweet spot there to be able to target him, shoot him a few times, let him go past you with his little charge attack and then hit him from behind again when he's recovering. That right there, that is what you have to do. Hit him a few more times, wait for him to do it again, dodge, do it over again. That, that's how you, that's really the only way to beat him. Other than that, um, it's really tricky. You have to get him stuck in this pattern where that's all he does, because his other attacks are just too hard to dodge. All right, let's use the graveyard finisher on him. Yeah! So badass. Yeah, Bear Walken's defeat in the anime, though, is absolutely tragic when you consider his character development and his, the implement, implementation of his daughter, which is not in the first game at all, but she's in the second game. Long grave. 